America is now built on its urban centers and populated regions. From the Northeast Megalopolis to the Texas Triangle, the U.S. has plenty of these megalopolises and mega regions. So today I'm going to talk about one of these mega regions that really interests me, and that's the Front Range. First we'll go through the population growth experienced in its cities, and then we'll go over some interesting aspects about this mega region. Before the video starts though, please consider subscribing to the channel. We make geography content like this every week, so if that's the kind of thing you'd enjoy, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future uploads on the channel. It helps me out a ton, and it's super easy for you. Thank you! So first of all, what and where is the Front Range? Well, the Front Range is a populated region in the west central part of the country. The definition of where it stretches is debatable, with some people only including parts of Colorado and Wyoming, and others taking it farther down into New Mexico. For the sake of making this video more interesting, I'm going to be talking about the whole line of cities stretching from Albuquerque up to Cheyenne, which ends up holding a total population above 6 million across its three states. The urban corridor is known as the Front Range because traveling east to west, it's right along the Rocky Mountains in the first spot you'd encounter the chain of mountains. So with all of these cities being located right at the edge of the range, and some basically being at the foot of the mountains, it's become known as the Front Range. Now that we've gotten our definitions out of the way, let's go over the cities one by one and talk about their population growth and some interesting things about them, starting in the far south with our first city, Albuquerque. Albuquerque is the largest city and metropolitan area in New Mexico, located on the Rio Grande where I-25 and I-40 meet. It's famous for being where the Netflix show Breaking Bad takes place. In 1950, it had a population of 197,000, improving to 916,000 in 2020. This ends at a 365% increase within that 70 year time frame, which sounds like a very good increase, but we also need to factor in that this is a Sunbelt city, and 1950 is when a lot of these cities started skyrocketing in population. So though 375% is still a good increase, it's not the craziest thing ever. Moving to the north, next we have Santa Fe. Santa Fe is the capital of New Mexico and is known for being the oldest city in the US west of the Mississippi, being founded around 1609. Because of this, it's by far the most historic city on the list, and you can see this immediately when visiting there or just by seeing pictures. There's no major skyline or central business district, and the downtown is built around the Santa Fe Plaza, with shops built all around it. It's a beautiful city and near the top of my list of cities I still need to visit. Its population was 37,600 in 1950, improving to 155,700 in 2020. That's an increase of 314%. Meaning, yet again, it hasn't grown as fast as other Sunbelt cities. But with the historic aspects of the city, infrastructural restrictions, and slight lack of suburbanization, this is not surprising. Moving across the border into Colorado, next we have Pueblo. Located 100 miles south of Denver, Pueblo is known historically for its steel industry, being called the Steel City, an incredibly unique city nickname used nowhere else in the U.S. The city is not looked upon favorably by the rest of the state. It has a high crime rate, being one of the most dangerous cities in Colorado. It's also considered the poorest city in the state, with a median household income of 40450 over 30000 less than the state average. With this has come relatively low population growth compared to the rest of the Front Range. In 1950, it had a population of 89600 growing to 168200 in 2020. This gives us a growth rate of 87.7%, which is much lower than any other city we'll talk about, especially in Colorado, which we'll get into more in a minute. Because next up, we have Colorado Springs. Now, I'll never pass up a chance to talk about Colorado Springs. The city is one of my favorites in the entire U.S. I know the city very well and like just about everything about it. It's built basically right next to the mountain, meaning they affect a lot of parts of its residents' day-to-day -day life. You have Garden of the Gods, Cheyenne Mountain, and Pikes Peak just outside the city. And a quick drive on US-24 will take you straight into the mountains, where there is so much to do, from hiking to fishing to anything else. Now because other people have realized this, Colorado Springs has seen major growth, more than any other city I'll talk about today. In 1950, the population was 53,000, increasing to 693,000 in 2020. This gives us a growth rate of 1,208%, which is a lot more along the lines of cities that have actually exploded in population throughout the Sun Belt in places like Florida and Texas. Next up we move to the biggest city in the Front Range, Denver. Now if the Front Range was a state, Denver would be the capital. The city is definitely the focal point of the mega region, being over twice as large as the next biggest city, and having an extensive metropolitan area, growing into one of America's most important cities. 
The changes Denver has experienced between 1950 and 2020 cannot be ignored, going from a population of 505,000 to 2.9 million in that time. Not only is that an increase of 2.4 million, but it's also more importantly an increase of 480% in a city that was already well established by 1950. It's seen some crazy growth. Moving just to the north and staying in the Colorado region of the Front Range, next we have Fort Collins. This is another city built more into the mountains, with US-34 coming out of the mountains in the south part of the metro in Loveland. This road, of course, being the main connector to Rocky Mountain National Park. To the north, you can go into the Poudre Canyon. I've visited both of these places before, but especially Rocky Mountain, which I've been to more times than I can count. The population was 32,000 in 1950, increasing to 332,900 in 2020, another large increase of 940% there making it the second fastest growing city on our list within that time frame. Finally, we get to the north end of the Front Range with Cheyenne, Wyoming. This is the capital of its state, also being the largest city in Wyoming, which also happens to be the least populated state in the nation. That kind of shows you that Cheyenne itself isn't actually all that big. It had a population of 47,700 in 1950, which actually interests me because of how large it was at that time. But anyways, it then increased to 100,700, giving us a growth rate of 111%, a respectable but still quite low amount for the region. So now that we've gone through the cities and the front range, let's go over some interesting aspects about this mega region. Starting with obviously the most major part of the front range, this being the mountains. This whole line of cities is built along the front of the Rocky Mountains. This makes it far more desirable and has been a big region for the growth. When thinking about somewhere like Denver, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Obviously it's going to be the mountains. People move there because it's in a beautiful area with some of the tallest mountains in the country located just to the west of the city. It's the same thing with a lot of these cities, especially in Colorado. Fort Collins and Colorado Springs has seen significant growth, as we just talked about, and they also just so happen to be right along the edge of the mountains. The places with slower growth, like Pueblo and Cheyenne, are located farther away from the mountains. Either way, a lot of the desirability that comes with the Front Range is because of the Rocky Mountains. The Front Range is also located along the I-25 corridor. The interstate highway passes through every major city I've talked about, working its way from Albuquerque all the way up through Cheyenne. With that, the mega region is located in between I-80 in the north and I-40 in the south. I-25 makes it interesting because everyone traveling north to south or south to north will get to experience and see everything going on in the front range and pass through all its biggest and most important cities. As a whole, the region is on the rise. Denver is a city of the future that will continue to solidify itself as one of America's most important metropolitan areas. And over the last 70 years, this region along the mountains has become more and more popular, seeing steady economic growth in areas close to Denver. We notice that the outer parts of the mega region are not doing as well economically, but they're still growing at a good rate. I think the future is very bright for the front range because it has more drawing people than just economic opportunities and the cities there. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, KMS162, Jeremy Jarvis, Haystack, Uncouver, Boss King Inc., Pol Pot's Piehole, Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Darkbird, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolfling73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikki Tomartinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryson. I appreciate you all so much, you really help out the channel, especially the people that have been here for a really long time, you've really done a lot for me. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. It's just an extra way to support me as a person if you appreciate the videos. It'll all go straight into my savings, so you're just helping me out as a person if you appreciate my content. Thank you.